like I said, I re was really not really confident with my vocals, so I kind of learned how to do my own thing, you know, in a way that made me f me feel confident about it, you mm -hmm. know, and that I thought sounded great. So that's kind of how I came up with the, my sound. We were talking about bullying really yeah. changes you. And you don't realize how much it changes you until you get over it, yeah. you know, until it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> like a resurgence of confidence. And... Totally, yeah. yeah. When you moved here, you moved to Woodland Hills, right? Yeah. Um, Where, how, how do you know this? I don't know, you know, just interviewing <laughs> you, just doing my yeah, research. Yeah, I moved to Woodland Hills. Hi everybody, it's Laura for Sidewalk Talk. I'm here with Germano. Hello. Uh, so let's get into it. I know you are from Brazil. Yes. Uh, I can't really pronounce your hometown, can you? Ribeirão Preto. Yeah, so that No place. one can. It's fine. Um, can you tell me about like what it was like growing up there? Yeah, um, I lived um, there until I was 15. So basically, you know, until I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting. I lived there, but like on the weekends, I would go to the um, to my grandparents' hometown, mm -hmm. which is really small. It's like twenty thousand people. Oh wow, that is pretty small. So yeah, that's where most of my family is. So and we're really close, so we would go like every single weekend. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a it's like the countryside of Brazil, mm -hmm. so that's interesting too. Are you like into nature or anything? Yeah, we we had like a farm and stuff like close to my grandparents' house, so mm -hmm. we would go all the time. Cool. I know how to ride horses and all that. Oh yeah, you know, actually, <laughs> it was like really, it was like when I was doing some digging on you oh, for no. the interview, but it said like one of your talents on like this one really obscure website was really? horseback riding. Yeah, it was like horseback riding and tennis and like... Tennis, yeah, I was in the high school, uh, I, on my high school, wait, what am I trying to say? <laughs> um, during high school, I, I was on the tennis team, but uh -huh. only for a year. Why? And I was literally the worst. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Like you just... Why was I so bad? Yeah. Like did you not practice or...? <laughs> I think like I think the coach when I like we have to uh, audition. I don't know if that's the name yeah. but we have to kind of you know audition. And I think he he was kind of like on the, on the fence. Should I let him in? Uh -huh. um, and I don't know I think he felt bad. Oh, that it was like this international kid who wanted to have like a cool experience, you uh -huh. know, to tell tell everyone. But yeah, I was literally the worst. I would stay on the bench like all games. Oh, that sucks. Well, I mean, at least you can say you're on the team, I guess. Yeah, my name's on the um, yearbook mm -hmm. for oh. the tennis team. So that's cool, I guess. Your mom is a pianist? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. That's kind of how I got started, um, playing the piano. Mm -hmm. um, we always had a, an upright piano in my house. Um, and I remember one day, I think it was probably like five five or six, mm -hmm. I got one of her books, like her music books, mm -hmm. and I kind of started playing. And then I, I asked her to, you know, teach me songs, easy songs. Mm -hmm. And she saw that I had interest and she taught me, she started teaching me, you know, that. songs that were a little harder. Uh -huh. And she saw that I had, I guess, talent. <laughs> so piano was your first instrument? Yeah, that's my foundation. That's yeah. where I write, you know, most oh. of the songs, stuff like that. Um, I remember reading that she played a lot of like Elton John and yes. like Frank Sinatra. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the artists, or other artists or like bands that she played in the house? Well, your song by Elton John, uh -huh. that that's like our song, you know what Aww. I mean? Yeah, that's, if I had to choose, I guess, one song to define me or like, my, yeah, I would choose your, your song by Elton John. Mm -hmm. That's such a beautiful, beautiful song. Such a classic. Like if you it hear is. Elton John, it's that and, and Rocket that's one Man. Of, yeah, and that's one of the first songs she taught me. Mm -hmm. I asked her because I loved it so much. Aww, that's awesome. And she would play. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, and she would play My Way by Frank Sinatra. Uh -huh. I think that's her favorite song. Mm -hmm. So I kind of grew up, you know, listening to the classics. Mm -hmm. And you have like a really close relationship with your mom, right? Yeah. I talk to her every day. Uh -huh. Yeah, we either she, 
I either call her or she calls me and we we're always texting on mm -hmm. WhatsApp. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what about your relationship with your dad? My dad's more quiet. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess, you know, that's a normal thing, I guess, for dads. <laughs> um, a stereotypical stoic, like, yes. quiet man. Yes, he's a prosecutor. Oh. <laughs> so maybe you can get an idea. Uh-huh, got it. Um, he's very serious, but he's, always, he's also very um, funny when mm -hmm. he's around people. In another interview, you mentioned that you're like, that, <laughs> sorry, there's a fly. <laughs> um, in another interview, you mentioned that you were like a class clown when you were in school. Do you think you got that from your dad since he's pretty funny? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Um, my mom is funny, but like she's funny in a way that she doesn't realize she's funny, you know? Oh, yeah. And it's more like me and my sister laughing at her uh -huh. <laughs> of the things she says or the things she does. Got um, it. But yeah, I was always like a class clown. I remember this one time when I was seven, we were gonna have like a camping camping trip, whatever, and um, I decided not to go and I was kind of sad about that. Uh -huh. And I was crying before I got into Aww. class because I was really sad. And then right before I got into class, I like wiped my tears and I got in and I told a joke or something, you know, and that's, uh -huh. yeah, I would always like try, try and make people laugh for some Aww. reason, I don't know. Just naturally? Yeah. Cool. Um, and you got sent to the principal's office a bunch, right? Oh yeah. Can yeah. you tell me some of those stories? I mean, I would like, I would do the exercises and whatever and finish before everyone. Uh -huh. I was really good at school. Uh -huh. So I would finish before everyone and then I would just be an asshole and like, <laughs> can I curse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would just be kind of an asshole and try and, you know, disturb everyone around what me. What the heck? Why? Why? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> just and try and, Yeah. And then the teachers would, like, be lecturing and I would interrupt them or make a joke, uh, you know? Wow, you're and one then, of those kids. Oh, yeah. I was kind of bad, yeah. Uh-huh. And that was until, like, ninth grade. And then I got, got easier. Got it. So almost by the time, like, when you were here in yeah. America? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you moved here, you moved to Woodland Hills, right? Yeah. Um, how, Where, oh, how do you know this? I don't know, you know, just interviewing <laughs> you, just doing my yeah, research. Yeah, I moved to Woodland Hills. I actually only stayed there for like two months. Oh, that's I'd say. really short. And then, yeah, and then I moved to Northridge because I came here as an exchange student. Yeah. Um, and I had to move, I had to like, I came to stay with one host family, mm -hmm. oh. but that didn't work out. So I had to move to the other host family's house, which was Bro, in Northridge. You're in my hood. I'm like, I'm from the valley. So. Oh, you are? Yeah. From, I'm from where? Do you know where Granada Hills is? Yeah. It's like two, three miles away from yeah, Northridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my city. <laughs> um, where'd you go to high school? Taft. Oh shit, you were so close. Where'd you go? I went to Chaminade. I don't know that. No, it's, it's like in a, Granada? It's in West Hills. Oh, okay. So like Taft is like, it's like kind of like, sort of. Like Woodland Hills? Yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. And then like almost Canoga ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and I was like on the, like a couple miles from Taft. That's mm -hmm. wild. That's cool. Yeah. How'd you um, convince your mom to even move here? That was a lot of work I had to do, a lot of talking. Yeah, I, bet, I mean, a 15 year old saying, Mom, I want to move to a whole ass other country. Yes, but it wasn't just like one talk, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was something that I, you have, first of all, you have to plan for like a year before you yeah. come, I guess. You have to go to a travel agency and stuff. And right. so, but even before that, I kind of always knew, I always knew that I wanted to, I wouldn't say I wanted to live here, mm -hmm. but I, I don't yeah. know. Sorry. <laughs> it was a butterfly. I'm like You're super scared? scared of butterflies. <laughs> They're so pretty. They're so scary. I like the yellow ones. Oh yeah, the ones where you can't really see their shape. They're just like... You're like scared of the yellow ones yeah. you can't see them coming. No, I can't see it. I mean, I don't like any of them. Um, what was I talking about? Um, getting a travel... Oh yeah. Even before I, like, we went to the travel agency or anything, I always knew that I wanted to come here, at mm -hmm. least for high school, you know, to have that experience. Um, but I didn't really know that I was gonna, you know, live here mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Um, and then, like, every time we would go to dinner or whatever, I would bring up, you know, and just kind of annoy them to, <laughs> uh -huh. the, to the point that they didn't have a choice. Wow, you are persistent. Good for you, though. Yeah. Like, it's a, yeah. 
Like that's honestly it's my pretty. best and my worst quality. <laughs> when you moved here, like there weren't that many acting classes in Brazil, so you took acting classes here. Yeah, that was my first um, experience with acting. Mm -hmm. um, I I've always wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. I think I probably watched when I was six years old. I watched like a musical, um, a film, mm -hmm. and I wanted to you know do both. Um, I don't like when people ask me, you know, which one do you prefer, yeah. you know? Like you're a creative person, you want to do what you can do. Exactly. Yeah. But in my city, um, it's very close to Sao Paulo. I always say, I'm <laughs> there's another <laughs> butterfly. Is it gone? Oh shit, it's like falling. <laughs> wow, fuck me, it's right there. It's, you know, just... You want me to... Yeah, I hit it with a baseball bat, no. Why was the question? Um, like what was it like taking acting classes? Oh yeah, um, so basically in my city there weren't many um, acting schools. Uh -huh. um, I, I think I did a play um, in middle school. It was in English actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really, you know, have had a, uh, I didn't have a proper acting class until I came here mm -hmm. when I was 16. And my English was really bad. Uh, that's kind of how I learned. It really helped mm -hmm. me because I was kind of shy in high school. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't really, you know, talking is how you kind of learn the language. Yeah. And I wouldn't really talk that much. Wait, how'd you go from being a class clown to being super shy? Was I was like bullied new... in oh. ninth grade. Really? That kind of, yeah, changed things. <laughs> why, like, if you don't mind, like, why? Yeah, sure. Why were they bullying you? Um, like... I posted a video on YouTube. Um, me singing Baby by Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh -huh. And it was before covers were a thing, so it wasn't, and, it was actually meant... Visually and, and like... Sorry, I get distracted. No, it's cool. <laughs> it was actually meant for just one friend to see. Because mm -hmm. it was a friend who liked music, and I was like, oh, let me, you know... I don't know, I just wanted to show her that, you know, I like to play guitar and sing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I recorded um, this cover and it was really bad and I lost the password to the account so I couldn't no. delete it. Uh -huh. So it stayed up for like a year or so until I um, was able to take it down. Uh -huh. But you know bef um, because I was such a class clown and you know people knew me I was really good at sports when I was a kid so I knew a lot of people. Other than tennis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, tennis was my weakest, uh -huh. um, but I knew a lot of people and it kind of got viral. Oh wow! And it was really bad. It was bad, but um, yeah, I kind of got through it. Mm -hmm. You know, it take, it really changes you as a person when you get bullied. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying like I didn't bully people, because I definitely did. You know, when I when I was such a class clown, I would make fun of people too. Mm -hmm. So that kind of backfired. It was like That's karma, karma coming yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's also like a crazy, like being in the digital age is such a yeah, crazy Yeah, and that time. was what, 2010? Mm -hmm. So that wasn't like a thing, you know? Cyberbullying was, bullying yeah. wasn't really a word that people used. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really know how to, you know, I didn't really know how to cope with it. Yeah. It, and it's you like. You kind of just go through it. Yeah, because what else can you do, really? I mean, like... Yeah, just time, and yeah. then people forget about it eventually. Yeah, but, yeah, but that really shook, like, my confidence. Yeah. I don't like using shook, the word. But um, <laughs> it really, um, you know, it... I, like, I still struggle with singing live, I guess. Really? Yeah, because of that. Because I feel like, oh, my voice... You know, I don't really like my voice. It took me a while for me to really... Um, just post covers on the internet mm -hmm. because I didn't really like my voice. And now you want to be, you want to pursue music. Yeah, so that's kind of like a weird thing to have, you know, my brain. Yeah. Um, that I've always wanted to do this, but now, you know, I feel like I can't because my voice is not that great or whatever. But that, those are just thoughts that are, are temporary because, yeah. you know, ultimately... I have a goal and I have, you know, ambition and stuff like that, so. Exactly. And you have, like, followers that are loyal to you already and this is, like, the beginning of your career, like, you should have faith in those positive things. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I'm very lucky. Um, I have, I had my first fan account, I think, two years ago oh, when wow. I was just posting covers. Uh -huh. So I was really, you know, surprised 
yeah. it's really weird, you know, that people, I don't know, I'm a fan of so many artists, like it's weird when people are a fan of you. Yeah. After high school, you went to Pepperdine mm -hmm. um, and you studied communication. What yeah. was it like to drop out? What year did you drop out anyway? I did two years, like two full years. Mm -hmm. And I also did like a summer program, so I guess more than, you know, two years. Like two and a half almost. Yeah. What was it like um, to drop out? It was scary. Yeah. But like, not scary to the point, you know, I still did it. But it was really scary. Um, you know, I, I was telling everyone I wanted to be a songwriter and that mm -hmm. I was a songwriter and an actor. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have anything to back it up. Yeah, like you, you know didn't I mean? have a... Any connections, right? Or yeah, or even like songs. Like I wouldn't yeah. sing to my family, so it's just like me, just telling them. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have anything to like hold on to. But mm -hmm. so you know, in the beginning, um, they supported me like financially, I guess, but not really. You know, supported me, you know, emotionally. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, yeah, it was hard because of that. But you know, eventually, I got, I started. You know, doing some short films and stuff like that. So yeah. I kind of, you kind of find your way as you go through. How did you even get into all that? Like you, like you were at the Lee Strasberg. Mm -hmm. That was, um, I think, I dropped out, and then six months later, I joined um, Lee Strasberg. How did you find out about that? Uh, the school. Yeah, and then all the other like opportunities. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, have no money. Um, <laughs> Wait, what was that? <laughs> um, how'd you like find out about all those like schools and oh, yeah. um, those opportunities? Yeah, I guess also um, being international here, um, you kind of, you know, there's not many things you can do to stay in the country. Mm -hmm. So I guess going to school, I mean, I like school and I like yeah. learning, but you know, one of the reasons is that I wanted to stay here. Yeah. Know? And so I decided to go to Lee Strasberg, I think. I, I searched, you know, all the actors that have studied there and I, I thought, you know, these are people I look up to and their mm -hmm. work, so I decided to go there. I went there for a year. So going back to like music and stuff, like you were playing music, or you were playing like the keyboard and piano at mm -hmm. like age six, right? Yeah. Um, and you wrote your first song at eight. Yeah. What was that song about? Oh man, I think my sister went to, like she had a dance, um, like showcase mm -hmm. at the end of the year, like people do that in Brazil. And we went there and she was dancing to this song. Um, and I think I just kind of copied the melody. I stole uh -huh. the melody and I put my own twist on it, like uh -huh. the lyrics. So that that was my first song. Oh, cute. No, it wasn't <laughs> cute. No, <Nope. laughs> just flat out. No. Yeah, and then I also, I wrote a bunch of songs in English, even though my English was trash. Uh -huh. I would just like write it in Portuguese and then translate it on Google Translate, mm -hmm. which doesn't translate really yeah. well. <laughs> so they weren't very great. But then, you know, I started learning the language and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You started putting out all those covers on YouTube and like mm -hmm. SoundCloud and everything. Um, what was it like to gain like traction and a following? It started really slow. Um, mm -hmm. I I had it took me a while to get like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a boom, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I was really just surprised that people liked my covers. You know, I I really felt insecure about my vocals, and so I was really surprised. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, when people started. Um, to react to them in such a positive way, I guess that it gave me more confidence, you know, to keep doing more. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I noticed in some of your videos you have like a little setup in your bedroom with like a record player and some books. Yeah. In the background, what are what are the records that you have in the books you have? I don't have that record player in, anymore. Oh no! Which why? Which sucks. Well, I was telling you, um, I'm in 2017. Mm -hmm. I moved like 10 places in one yeah. year and um, I left my record player player in one no. of those places and then I asked um, you know the people who live there still and they they said oh we donated or something like that wow like, that sucks yeah, sure. I mean I hope they're not watching but <laughs> I mean if they stole sure your shit lying. 
Yeah. Yeah, but I don't have that anymore. I want to buy one though. I want to buy one. Mm -hmm. I have one in Brazil. Just have it sent over. Yeah, but then I want to have one in my room over there too. You oh, yeah, so I mean? you just have to buy one anyway. Yeah, and then yeah. there I have the Amy Winehouse. Um, Solid. Yeah, the Lioness, her really last mm -hmm. album. I mean, she died before that. Yeah. I have that one. I have the Lumineers. Mm -hmm. So, like, your influences are like. All over the place. Indie, pop, pop, like indie rock almost. Yeah. Um, and then classics like Frank Sinatra. Yeah, and the Beatles. Yeah. I mean, they're rock, pop rock, I guess. Yeah. But um, for a while um, in college, I think, I really only listened to 50s and 60s music, mm -hmm. which is. Interesting. I, yeah. I don't know. I was just in a phase where I only listened to that stuff. And that's kind of how I, you know, got into James Dean's movies and, mm -hmm. you know, he really inspired me as an actor too. Cool. Yeah. Um, and speaking of acting, like you had your first, uh, your first, um, I don't know, appearance was like on that, was for a character in Maestro, Maestro? Oh yeah. Um, and you Maestro. Played, yes, thank you. <laughs> Andy. I think that's a word in English too, but I don't really know how to say I it. I think in English. English it's Maestro. I don't know, man. I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were in that. Yes. And you played an immigrant. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you, I'm just like there so scared. There's another plot. <laughs> yeah, I'm just scared of all the bugs. Um, yeah, so like what was it like playing an immigrant, which you are That in? was my first, you know, real thing. Yeah. Um, it was a student film, but it was a thesis, I think, if I'm mm -hmm. not wrong. So it, it wasn't, you know, just... I've done student films before, but they were really, you know, just one person holding a camera. Uh -huh. And that one was my biggest one at that point mm -hmm. and I got to work with um, a really cool actress from Brazil oh, cool. she had done a lot of work in Brazil so I was I really didn't know what I was doing I didn't yeah. know what I was doing yeah but you took acting classes and I did but I didn't really have a lot of experience on set mm, right. so I really learned a lot from that and I got to play an immigrant mm -hmm. um, and me it's me my mom and my grandma, and I'm oh, the wow. only one who's legal in the country. Uh -huh. So I kind of like have to support them in a yeah. way by driving a car, being a taxi driver or uh -huh. Uber driver. Right, because they can't drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any other causes other than like immigration that you're like passionate about? Oh yeah, um, I have so many causes, but you know that I wish I was more involved. I feel mm -hmm. very self-conscious of not doing enough, mm -hmm. but. I'm really passionate about um, the homelessness here in LA. Oh yeah. I think it's really sad. I get emotional, but I think it's really sad to see people on the streets. Yeah. Don't have anything. So yeah. And it's like everywhere in LA. Like it's in literally the valley. everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're like in a fancy neighborhood. You can yeah. turn on a corner and there's you know someone there. Yeah, like here in Santa Monica, it's like Santa Monica is like a wealthy city, but then you have like a couple neighborhoods with pockets of like homelessness everywhere. Yeah, I just saw, you know, people on the way here. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, yeah. And that's something that I was actually really surprised when I came to LA for the mm -hmm. first time. Really? When I moved here when I was 16. Yeah, because I, you know, like the way I guess the US advertises. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Life is great, everything's perfect. Yeah, and then I got here and yeah, I was surprised yeah. about how many homeless people. Yeah, it's awful. I hope there's solutions. Yeah, I hope I can do something when I have money, you know, more money. Yeah. You don't need money to help people, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Do but at least you have stuff. a platform to yeah, speak up about I guess. It. <laughs> You're in Camila Cabello's Havana video. Oh my god, video. I was. And you are also in American Crime Story with Darren Chris, right? Yeah, but I was only, I only worked those jobs as an extra. Oh, got it. Yeah. Uh, well, what was it like being around? That was after I graduated from Lee Strasberg. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I thought, you know, let me get some experience yeah. on set. And then with the, my visa that I had at the time, I could only work as an actor and not, you know, as a wait, waiter or anything else. Got it. So I thought, you know, being an extra was, you know, the easiest way to make money and mm -hmm. one of the only ways to make money when you're in that situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I remember I knew the song Havana and I really liked it, but uh -huh. it just blew, you know, it just became such a huge hit. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, sometimes I tell people I'm, I was part of that and 
you know, they don't believe me. So also going on with your career in music, um, you directed and produced your first music video and song, right? With yeah. The Lost Crowd. Mm -hmm. What was it like to have something that's so completely your own thing and seeing it come to life? That's like the best feeling, I guess. I mean, to me as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have all these ideas in your head and then I, you know, I drew a little storyboard and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then, you know, to actually, it was pretty, like everything came pretty close to what I had imagined mm -hmm. in my head. So it was pretty crazy. Um, it was my first time directing anything. So I wasn't really sure how it was yeah. going to turn out. But um, I, I kind of had, you know, confidence that it was going to turn out okay from being on set yeah. and working with, you know, so many different directors and actors. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I learned, you know, how yeah. to work on set. Um, and, yeah. That's awesome, like, that you had that opportunity mm -hmm. to just make something your and own also, baby. also, yeah, I had, like, my own ideas. I had a bunch of ideas for, you know, different scenes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Excuse me. So I thought, you know, since I have all these ideas and they're so specific, you know, I should maybe just try and direct it. Yeah. Since I know what I want to see, you know? Yeah. So that's, that was kind of natural. Cool. Um, do you have any other, like, highlights from, like, music or acting that you want to talk about? Well, I'm shooting a short film um, the next weekend and the mm. weekend after that that I'm really excited about. Uh -huh. um, it's called The Monsters Club. It's kind of a horror mm -hmm. drama. Cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to do a horror film. How come? I'm a big horror film fan. Oh yeah? Yeah. I um, can't do horror films. I'm really? such a bitch about them. No, I, like... I watch all of, all the films that come out like in theaters. How do you do that? That shit's like all I the jump scares. I laugh at them. Really? I think it's funny. I don't know, I have maybe a dark sense of humor, <laughs> but I just laugh at them. Your music has been described as like coming of age pop and yes. like really super cinematic and visual. Um, how has like your music changed, if at all, since well, you started? Yeah, for first of all, I think I kind of f found that style through the covers that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think, like I said, I re was really not really confident with my vocals, so I kind of learned how to do my own thing. You know, in a way that made me f me feel confident about it. You mm -hmm. know, and that I thought sounded great. So that's kind of how I came up with the, my sound, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's, you can really see that in Lost Crowd. Yeah. But um, the music I'm writing right now is kind of, because I wrote those songs in 2017, and now I'm writing like very in introspective songs, but they're not like about a group of people and, you know, mm -hmm. um, like a crowd, the Lost Crowd and my friends. It's more about me. Mm -hmm. um, and how, I don't want to say too much about it, yeah. but it's more about me and, you know, my point of view instead of like, we are American dreamers, whatever. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's awesome. That you yeah, know. and the sound, um, this is very like indie. Um, I want to, the next EP is going to be more um, like dance pop. I guess. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. I want to make people dance. <laughs> Why the transition from... I grew up listening to that kind of music, you know? Right, Lady Like I Gaga. said, the first song I wrote was, you know, my sister dancing um, to... Yeah. I don't remember the song, but <laughs> my sister dancing to that kind of music. Mm -hmm. And so, the you know, I listen to pop a lot, pop songs, mm -hmm. and I just want to make something a little more upbeat. Got it. Um, actually, my next single that is, you know, that I'm doing right now for the EP, The Lost Crowd, um, I'm trying to make it a little bit more upbeat to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, to transition, I guess, more yeah. easily. Just seems like the natural segue. Yeah. Cool. Um, how would you say you've changed in general, like in the past few years? Oh my God, so much. You know, like we were talking about bullying really yeah. changes you. And you don't realize how much it changes you until you get over it, yeah. you know? until it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> like a resurgence of confidence. And totally, yeah. yeah. I think um, after I wrote the EP, I finished it last year. Mm -hmm. Even when I started writing, um, Lost Crowd was the first song that I wrote for, wrote for the EP. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of, you know, found my sound and I kind of found my, I don't know, it, it's really cheesy, but you kind of, I kind of found my calling, I guess, mm -hmm. you know? I guess I had something to say, 
Mm -hmm. And that really, you know, that's all you need. Yeah. You know, that keeps you, you know, moving forward and um, wanting to put that those that message out. Um, you know, that's my biggest my biggest goal, I guess. Mm -hmm. And like on that note, um, like with bullying and stuff, what uh, what are some of other than that? Like, what are some of the biggest challenges you faced? Um, since when? <laughs> since ever. <laughs> hmm. I guess, you know, um, when I first moved here was language, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't really good with English, um, and then I had an accent really thick, I still have an accent, but, you know, when I have to act, I kind of hide it. Yeah. I guess being away from my family, too, mm. that's something I guess, you know, you talk about language and stuff like that, immigration, yeah. but I guess being away from my family, mm. you know, we're really close and being away from them, you know, for such a long time. Yeah. Of course, I still see them um, during holidays, stuff like that, but, you know, I was 15 when I left home. Yeah. And I'm 22 now. And, like, you go back home and so many things have changed. Yeah. And that's really, you know, I don't know. Your parents get old and you yeah. kind of realize, you know, people aren't perfect and, you know, just things changing and you're not being around them. Mm -hmm. I think that's something... Um, yeah. So, diving deep here, what does love mean to you? Um, I don't think I've ever been in love with someone. Um, but I love my family, so that's how I know. You know, mm -hmm. I love my friends. Um, I'm very loyal to the people that I love. Mm -hmm. And I would do anything for the people that I love. I guess that's what love is, you know, unconditional. Yeah. Caring and support and... Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Even when that's, you know, tough love and having to tell your friend, you know, that maybe that's not the best, um, um, what am I trying to say? Maybe that's not the best, I don't know what I'm trying Choices to say. Choices or decisions? Yeah, that's not the best decision to make right now, even though it seems mm -hmm. like it is or it seems like it's the best thing in the world. Yeah. You know, just being real and really caring about them. Do you have that for yourself? Like, do your friends do that for you? Yeah, they do. I was surprised by the question, but yes. <laughs> I have, you know, I'm really lucky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm really lucky that once I kind of found myself, I really found people who care about me, you know, my mm -hmm. friends. Um, I was telling you, you know, you learn so much as an international person here. And, you know, having to do with tickets and how do you pay for that yeah. and how do you get a license here in America. I didn't have parents who, you know, could teach me that because it's such a different city. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do I get, um, how do I get an apartment? Mm -hmm. You know, they have to check your credit. I don't have a credit score because yeah. I'm not American. Yeah. So we have to find, figure out all of those things. And my friends have really become my, my family here in that mm -hmm. way, in the way that they care for me and they, I, they teach me, you know, a lot of things that I don't know. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered by? My work, I guess. My work and, um, you know, like I said, one day I hope to really help other people mm -hmm. in the causes that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. I think those two things, my work and, you know, the message that it stands for. You know, Lost Crowd, is it's all about finding yourself and having um, being lost, but you know, all your friends are lost, so let's be lost together and mm. having really that support. Um, yeah, I think if I want to put music out, it because it's because it has a message. Mm. You know, I write a lot of songs, but I really I am passionate about the songs that I'm putting out. I'm winded yeah. because <laughs> you know they have a message, and yeah. um, I really want to be remembered for that message, and you know. Um, like I said, the work, mm -hmm. um, helping other people, it's really something I'm passionate about. That's awesome. I love hearing when like people are like gaining traction in their with their platform and more and they're trying to extend it beyond themselves and like yeah, go beyond their own world. Yeah, I guess, you know, my family, my mom has, I kind of got that from her mm -hmm. and her dad. Um, he was a politician, but a good one. Mm, uh -huh. And he, you know, people really loved him because he helped so many people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he didn't really have the um, ambition to become a politician. Mm -hmm. 
he kind of he kind of just became one because he helped so many people and people wanted him to help other people help mm -hmm. more you know help the city whatever that's and like so, the, oh god yeah i kind of got that from my mom and my my grandpa uh -huh. that's I like think. the best kind of leadership when you don't want all that power and then you want it for people. yeah i don't i don't care about money i don't care about you know power whatever mm -hmm. it's just about the music and you know helping people it's refreshing